I was looking forward to retirement. At 99, my knees had more give than spring, and my hair had begun to grey at the temples. It would be nice to sign off after this job and make plans for the future. Maybe a cruise with Mari on the broads. Maybe even children. It felt hot, even hotter than usual that day, though anyone would tell you that was impossible. After hauling my bag up the ministry steps, I wiped my fringe aside for the scan. A moment later, the doors slid aside. The officer at the reception desk ran me through a contraband detector before smiling and waving me through. After a five-minute elevator trip, I stepped out onto the top floor, my head light with the altitude. Some wit had scrawled, Apollo's chariot welcomes careful drivers on the wall up opposite the lift doors. Outside the window, the city lay still, the black teeth of solar panels on every roof. I emerged into the main chamber, known as the temple, and immediately cursed myself for forgetting my goggles. The light stabbed at me through the great glass dome, forcing me to cover my eyes with one hand. My bag swung from my other elbow as I stumbled forward. Libra was at his station, moving his sensors over the gleaming white control panel that took up half of the room. Can I offer you some shielding, Mr. Cunningham? Please, I said, my voice cracking a little. Libra stroked the panel and solar plates slid across the ceiling with a gentle swoosh. There was a two-note bleep as something somewhere began to charge. As the room darkened, a hundred tiny lights twinkled on. Libra moved noiselessly across the room and parked his great cube of a body by a blue couch. I sat down to face him and poured myself some water. I was sorry to hear about your father, he said. Thank you, I said. My own father, that is, my designer, he died of the same thing only 12 months ago, said Libra. It spreads remarkably quickly, skin cancer. You'd think he, of all people, would have been cautious. Do you miss him? In as much as I can, he was a brilliant man, said the robot. He made me. He sprinkled hydrate into my glass and I stirred it with a pen. The salted edge always made me wince, but I had missed my lunchtime drink, so downed it quickly. In the centre of the room, the rest of Libra, his fixed body, reached up 50 metres or more, disappearing through the roof in a pyramid configuration. How long had Libra been in charge? A trick answer would be never, as he took all his orders from his programmers. But in reality, around 50 years. Certainly I was only an apprentice when he took control of the sun. Libra had been given a soothing tenor voice, following significant user experience research, so we all regarded him as male. He'd always insisted he didn't really see the point of different pronouns, and if being male helped people to trust him, it was all to the good. Plenty of people distrusted him on principle, though. Religious groups were up in arms at the blasphemy, a tentacled cube controlling God's son. My own father was an atheist, disliking the project for more political reasons. He rolled his eyes when the Melbourne Treaty was signed. He declared the Union of Solar States a waste of money when it was first convened. He crowed at the failed Libra prototypes as scientists from across the across the world dove into designing an automated system that could balance the yo-yoing temperatures from one country to the next. And when the system was finally rolled out and our little country was chosen as the host nation, Dad shook his head and said he wouldn't give it house room. On my 45th birthday, Dad told me that he'd been a journeyman at 17 and a carpenter by 30. I told him, it takes longer these days, there's so much more to learn, especially in the department. And we have longer. There's no rush. He'd snorted and returned to sanding a toy bird. I thought back to my father's bedside last year, remembering the glass of water that shook with the doctor's footsteps, the blackout blinds on his windows, the rampant patches of brown twisting across his burned skin, his insistence that when he was a kid they played outside all the time, my insistence that things were different now. I missed the birds most of all. 
Over the last three dozen years, the mornings had grown quieter and quieter. The three of the dusk swifts had given way to the roar of solar jets. The hedges had withered away and the sparrows with them. The last pigeons had faded from the streets more than 10 years ago and the Museum of Bird Life had sprung up in their stead. Libra had enjoyed my stories of photographing blackbirds, though I think he wondered if I'd imagined them all. Still, but for the loss of the birds, the trade-off was undeniable. One only had to look outside at the fresh, haze-free air and the miles of fields outside the city. We provided for the entire USS from our small island, selling any surplus solar power with the money returning to, with the money returning to official coffers. Apollo's chariot was a success. I handed Libra the file I had brought, and he coiled his arm around it, snicking out smaller tools with which to flip the pages. Paper really is the only secure channel these days, he mused as he read. Now then, I see. Yes. Something else from my briefcase had fallen to the floor. A phone number scribbled hastily by a colleague and stuffed discreetly into my pocket. A backstreet spectrum shop in Switzerland. Their filters hadn't managed to help, Dad. Our all-healing sun just couldn't be bent that way. Libra noticed the number, and the detached pillar in the centre of the room dimmed slightly. He laid out the letter on the table, and I read again the words from my brief. Apportioning sunlight. Interpretive programming, covert negotiations. For 20 years, he had been siphoning off sunlight. These are war states, I said. You sold solar to warlords. Have you ever seen the rainforest? He asked. Me neither, but no matter. It's nearly gone anyway. Those outside the solar states, we never seem to hear about their problems. They have synthetics and an allowance, I said. They signed the treaties. The richest people have enough, said Libra, for now. But the world has changed since those papers were signed. At most, the people of Peru, for example, have 40 years left. And the poorest are already buried. Did you know their average lifespan is a third of ours? It's not as simple as playing Robin Hood, I said. So it would seem, he said. We all seem to do things we shouldn't. What happens as a result is down to luck and security clearance. I'd say your actions, he gestured to the phone number, were honourable. I told him I wasn't so sure, that it hadn't helped. The money went to a network of organised criminals while Dad had still been eaten alive by tumours. Of course it was honourable, he said. As for me, consider me an oddly shaped atlas, doomed enough. Me and my spike here, we are meant to carry it all and not look around. But from up here, I see a little too much to ignore. Anyway, I suppose we'd best get on with this. He reached round to open his front compartment. I unzipped my bag and pulled out a tool I rarely used. It'll be quick. I said, without knowing why. Who will look after the sun? asked Libra, as I fitted the blanket to his main memory board. Or will you simply rewrite me? I'm here in the interim, along with the team, but I don't think the USS has decided on a long-term guardian, I said. I'm not sure they'll trust a robot again. Ultimately, they have no choice, said Libra, and I knew he was right. Only a robot would not go mad governing the source of life itself. When I turn this in a moment, that's it, I said. Blank slate. I understand. Is there anything you'd like me to record? I said. His cable swished for a second, then was still. Good luck. I turned the key, a low hum I had barely even noticed faded to silence.